हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम एवरीवन Achha, so I can see that some people, somebody has just reacted to the video, so that makes me sure that this is now live. Can you guys hear me properly? All righty. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Samar Hassan and I'm the founder of uh, Epiphany. Um, it's basically a firm that helps impact startups and we try to um, provide investment to them. We run different accelerator programs for them. and we really trying our best to support startups um in any way possible um so you know so today's ask me anything series has also been started as an effort to respond back to some of the problems that we are seeing startups are facing um and also to kind of you know um put a physical face to who we are uh, earlier on we used to conduct a lot of workshops in person events etc but now that we are unable to do that unfortunately because of covid-19 this you can still see us live um besides ask me anything series we've also got these um, other very interesting sessions planned epiphany talks which will also be happening once a week hopefully um which will uh, you know feature different experts uh, we'll talk about different topics that's going to be a slightly longer um series about an hour each this one is shorter this one is more ask me anything so you guys feel free if you haven't sent in your questions i have received by the way some very interesting questions so i'm just going to i'm just planning on scrolling through and taking a look at them but in case you weren't able to send across your questions please feel free to engage uh, right now you can comment and um, you know i'll take a look at the questions and respond to the ones that i'm capable of responding to so all right then um, how is everybody doing by the way um in this covid situation are we feeling okay are we okay what's happening and in general i think we i've received we've conducted different sessions with little epiphanies as well plus we're also running office hours every friday so i know that generally people were feeling a lot more demotivated in the first couple of weeks and now i think people are you know feeling slightly better it seems like people are coming back and um you know um, in a way fighting back um so so that's always very very positive acha so let me take a look at the questions um yeah so i got uh, this interesting question somebody has asked me what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen during lockdown um so i would have to say it it was money heist i just started watching the series um so yeah so money heist has been one of the most interesting things one of the most i shouldn't say boring because my daughter loves it but she's forcing me nowadays to watch the good witch um which is just okay um besides that i think there have been some really really interesting memes i'm not sure how many of the of you have seen the one with this anda paratha story going on where this man is trying to do work from home but his mom keeps offering him um yummy treats for breakfast i think there have been some really interesting memes like that that i've seen um um and then uh, on the covid response i think i've seen a lot of good articles on how to keep your team motivated how to keep engaging in this time of crisis how to demonstrate leadership so i think some of the some of this has been you know what's what's been going on um then there was another very interesting question so i'm just kind of like asking question i'm just responding to questions as i got them um not really you know a particular format um it's it's kind of like a mix between some personal questions and then some questions which are really around uh, entrepreneurship so then i've received another question on what would a world populated by clones of you be like <laughs> so i think um a lot of conversation i would imagine right i the people who know me uh, know that i talk uh, quite a bit so and i like to hear myself talk i like to hear myself you know heard so <laughs> so anyway so i would say yeah a lot of conversation probably and perhaps a lot more social entrepreneurs i would like to think that that a lot more people who are actually concerned about making one money while uh, creating an impact um so then there's another something that people have asked me how 
uh, what are some red flags when evaluating startups? All right, so I think it really depends on what I'm evaluating them for. If it's a particular competition that I'm evaluating them for, then of course, uh, depending on what the requirements of the competition are, it would be related to that. Um, the other one is it is it for an accelerator program, right? So if, if so, for instance, when we run our own accelerator programs, there's certain criteria. So for us, uh, one of the major things which is really really important is are they um, willing to listen? Because we've got this fantastic lineup of mentors. Um, we ourselves, our own team, also engages quite a bit. Between all of us, we've got a lot of experience. Um, I would say maybe around 50, 60 years of experience. So are they willing to listen or not? If they are unwilling, if they're uncoachable, then it's difficult to select them into the lab. And then, of course, uh, when I'm evaluating startups, it's very important. Are they all over the place? Are they trying to do each and everything under the sun? If you're trying to do that, um, yeah, chances are you're not going to be able to do anything well, right? So I think that's important. Then, of course, because we run social impact accelerators, if we're taking people into Epiphany Lab, it is very important for us. Are they actually geared towards creating impact or are they only trying to make money? Um, it has to be a fine balance between the two of them. Uh, finally, another important characteristic is are they very individualistic or are they trying to build up the community spirit? So, you know, so these are some of the things that we do. In other evaluation, when we're looking at startups, of course, you know, the scalability, the potential of the startup, that really, really matters. Um, all right. How do I stay positive and motivated all the time? And then the same person is also saying, attended your session, it was so energetic. Um, okay, so uh, one, that's a myth. I am not always motivated or very high on energy. Sometimes I do get low as well. The people who are close to me know that um, when that happens, but I'm lucky to have this very, very strong group of friends and family. So, you know, I can, I can kind of treat them like a well of um, bad things and or bad thoughts and just put them there and that's it then I can just you know get over that bump pretty nicely um, the other thing that works for me is sleeping on it so that helps you know just sleeping and then waking up the next day and it's it's a new day right so <laughs> what, to, what to do okay somebody is asking me how can we oh okay so a couple of questions which they are here oh Mateen is saying that we have the same hand free all right great Mateen um, hello, Rohit. Nice to see you too. What is a business canvas model? So business, business canvas model is essentially a one page business plan. So it's very, very visual. It has nine different components to it. Um, if you search and go online, I think you'll be able to find multiple sources. Strategizer has the business model canvas as well. I personally like to use the lean model canvas, uh, lean canvas model, because I think over there, there are certain things which are easier to tap into. Um, so essentially the way it functions, there are nine different elements. There is customers and you always have to start with your customer. Who is your ideal customer? Who are you trying to serve? And what are the problems that are faced by this particular customer segment that you're trying to serve? So, you know, so you identify the customers and you look at the problems that you're trying to solve for them. And then you talk about your own solution. So what is the solution that you're offering? What is your unique value proposition? That's the next bit that comes up. So basically what makes you unique? Um, what makes you different from the competitors? And what is it that um, you know, that will make your customers buy your product or service. That's your UVP, unique value proposition that you have to put together. Then you have to talk about, um, you know, the different channels. So how is it that, uh, you know, you can reach your different customers, the ones that you've identified? Are you going to find them on WhatsApp? Are you going to have to go and, you know, meet them face to face? Um, you know, is it social media that's the best way to reach them, etc. So the channels are important. Then there is a section for key metrics. Key metrics means how are you going to track your progress, right? And I'm just speeding through it, um, you know. By the way, there was another question. Somebody asked me, can I conduct a Lean Canvas, um, you know, methodology workshop? Absolutely. I would love to do that. We can figure out when to do it, uh, perhaps in the month of April or uh, even in May, we can take a look. So anyway, so coming back to this one, then there's key metrics that we've got. Then, of course, you've got, so key metrics means, okay, maybe you're tracking sales, maybe you're tracking customers, how many customers you've got on a monthly basis, uh, on a daily basis, um, how many of them are repeat customers, how much money are you making, what's your average sale, all of those are your key metrics, which depending on the startup that you've got, you would actually take a look at mapping different, um, you know, categories and keeping track of them. So I think that's really important um, to be able to gauge your progress, you know, are you moving forward? Uh, are you meeting some of the targets that you had set for yourself? Or are you just staying stagnant? 
Um, then, of course, there's the cost structure. So what are your fixed costs? By fixed costs, we mean costs which are on a recurring basis. So is it, um, you know, salary cost, uh, rent, electricity, all of these are going to be your fixed costs. One-time costs are different. One-time costs means essentially, suppose I was to set up a restaurant, all of the furniture that I would buy, all of the equipment that I would buy, all of those things, you know, the curtains, the beautification of the restaurant, that would be one-time cost. Um, and then you've got variable costs. So variable cost means, for instance, if you have riders, so and suppose you've got riders on a commission-based model. So if you are delivering more orders, you're going to have more uh, riders. Or, I mean, you're going to have spend more money if if the orders are less. And of course, because you were on a commission model, then you would um, that piece of uh, cost structure would be less. Um, after the cost structure, you've also got your revenue streams. How are you going to make money essentially? Okay, so. Simple, this is a pen, I'm going to sell it, um, earn money against it, that's a simple one transaction, right? But then I could also be like Netflix, where I've got subscription-based model and I'm making money by selling more and more uh, memberships. Um, so there are different uh, revenue streams that you have to take a look at. Um, it is always important to have diverse um, revenue streams. Okay, what other questions have we got? We've also got another question right now, how can you motivate your IT team to work from home better? All right, so I think what is really, really important and what we're finding that in this time of crisis, um, it is important to keep track of what you're trying to do. And the human, I mean, we're all human beings, right? So we like to see each other, we like to do that. So on a daily basis, I think it's very useful at the beginning of your day, um, you know, have a 15 minute touchdown, 10 minute, 15 minute touchdown, depending on how many people you've got. Take a look at what are the, um, you know, what are the tasks for the day? Um, chalk them out. Uh, maybe you can also do weekly tasks on a weekly basis and then on a daily basis just keep tracking them. Find out where people are getting lost. Um, do they need any help? Um, and if they need help, uh, you know, uh, they can they can kind of reach out to everybody as a team, highlight concerns, red flags, whatever, what may be, right? Um, similarly, uh, the other thing that you can do is, of course, you know, come on, keep sharing funny things as well, right? So keep them motivated, tell them that this is just something which is going to pass. Um, we in our lifetimes have not come across something this way so far. This is the first time that any of us is faced with this crisis. But you know, we will pull through. So I think part of it is just being available. Um, different people react differently. So you have to be conscious of that as well, uh, Rohit. Um, some people are positive people. They you know, tend to overcome crisis like these easily. Other people tend to panic a lot as well. I've seen people who are just stuck at home. They're not moving out because they're, they're you know, or they're, they're kind of like feeling really panicked and, and worried. Um, so I think part of it is also going to have to be counseling, talking to them, uh, motivating them as well. So as a community builder on the one hand, also as a leader of my organization on the other hand, it is important. So as Epiphany, we meet every day or we try to, okay? So some days we, we were unable to, but we try to meet every single day. Mm, you know, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just going over the different tasks that we've got for the day, um, what the challenges are. Uh, so far, we have not been very successful at seeing each other's faces because a lot of us are operating from our beds. Um, another thing to keep yourself motivated, by the way, um, get up in the morning as if it's a normal routine, go take your shower, get ready for work the way you would. And, um, you know, a lot of people are also complaining of getting distracted because there's family, their parents, children, um, spouses. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, of course, it's challenging. So try and find some space, you know, so for instance, today I'm choosing to work in my drawing room come dining room for this particular session. My daughter's upstairs. She can come down any minute and be angry with me because I just woke her up <laughs> to read from her curry sub. So, of course, you know, there are all these challenges, right? But I think, um, I think you have to pace yourself. Um, it is going to pass. I think this is a great opportunity to uh, strategize your future. All right, then we're talking about, oh, thank you, Josef. Yes, <laughs> I'm glad that you're signing in. Thanks, Bradley, for joining all the way from Georgia. All right, Mukim is asking, Mukim is saying, oh, okay, fine. Okay, all right, all right. Mukim is tarifing kar he's just saying good things. Uh, okay, Mukim, thank you. Um, listening to your inspiration and making notes, please feel free. All right, we also ran a session for our little epiphanies last week, which was a virtual session. And I was personally very, very affected because I saw everybody really looking sad and and you know i mean look it is going to pass right right now i think one of the major things and this is something which uh, one of the questions has also been posed over here to me 
how can we um, stay ahead of the curve? And I think one of the things which is the biggest realization, if you did not go digital till now, now is your opportunity. Okay, so go ahead and create that website that you were thinking that you will do, you know, later, just do it now. Right. So websites, digital strategy, being more out there, uh, communicating with your customers, telling them that you're not dying out, even if you are taking a temporary break. I think those things are really important. Um, Mizbah is asking a question. How do startups tackle with others around who ask for free services? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So look, a certain portion of your work can be free when you're trying to bring in customers. Sometimes you offer discounts. You've seen that. Um, you've seen promotions, so you so people sometimes have oh buy two get the third one free or buy two get the third one half price, right? So some of it needs to happen, but then I think what you can do is maybe bring them in, right? So Mizbah's because I'm in, I know Mizbah's uh, business. Um, what I can suggest to her is that bring it, bring on the uh, you know have membership fee, have people who are going to become your long term customers. So if you do that, you've locked them in, right? So on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, they know that they have to continue paying. Um, so that is useful. And simply look, um, another thing which my uh, former partner at Epiphany used to keep saying, one of his uh, mentors um, kept telling him, be poor, but don't be cheap, right? So I think we also need to respect our own selves. I think the work that we're trying to do is important. It needs to be priced properly. Um, and if people keep asking you for freebies, at a certain point, just tell them, I'm sorry, this cannot happen, right? We can't do that, okay? So one time, yes, you can do something for free to hook them, show them the value of your offering, but after that, let it go. If it fits in, the other piece that you can do is, of course, you can have some scholarships or whatever you're trying to do or discounts for certain people. So if you care passionately about, um, let's say you're providing IT skills and you really care about involving more and more women into it because you think women in tech are not um, included enough, then you could have special discounts for women in tech. Um, another thing that you could do, suppose you care about differently abled people, okay, the certain discounts that you have available are for those people, right? So so take a look at how you can um, tailor it. But yes, I, w I would say if people keep asking you for free services, um, don't give it to them, right? Um, all right, so again, uh, coming back to certain questions. Ha, huh, so one of the things, right? So one of the questions that I was posed was, what am I currently worried about? So I think one of the biggest uh, concerns right now that I've got is so many people in, in my community, right? So my community are, are entrepreneurs and my community are social entrepreneurs and all of these people who are trying to provide jobs to other people and, you know, sustain Pakistan's economy. So I think we, my community is a fantastic community, right? And right now I'm very concerned because a lot of people are, especially impact startups, are faced with working capital challenges. They're having to pause um operations they're having to let people go um, they're having to do a lot of make a lot of difficult uh, choices um, so i really really want to put out a, a note out there to all the big organizations look if you've got your csr budgets we i we would love to craft uh, craft uh, solutions for some of the startups who are struggling and small businesses who are struggling and channel them towards them because um you know economic uh, economic activity for Pakistan is very, very important right now. And while I'm seeing a lot of great, um, you know, support for daily wages, um, hello, people, we exist. <laughs> My community is very important. We are providing jobs to a lot of other people. So let's mobilize ourselves. And we're very, very happy, Epiphany as a whole, to identify certain startups and businesses and, you know, uh, kind of channel the funds over to them. It could be as short-term interest-free loans. It could be working capital loans. It could be um, it could some of it could be maybe convertible loans, whatever. So we can figure out, or they could simply be grants, right? So I think that's really really important to think about this particular segment. Um, then we've got questions like, which little epiphany do I like the most? <laughs> which little epiphany asked me this question is my question in return. So look, I can't choose a favorite. You know that um, you know my teachers don't have. Uh, well, maybe teachers do have favorite students, but. Nope, the ma'am does not have any favorite epiphanies or she's not going to reveal in public. All right, was I a top student at my school or just an average? Well, all the way up till A-levels, I was a very good student. Um, then in A-levels, I think I didn't want, I didn't need to become a doctor. So not that great. My A-level scores were really bad. Um, I attended your session in Karachi. It was very informative. Thank you. Uh, who is my mentor? So my uh, mentor who stuck with me throughout the years is this gentleman called Dr. Otto Hieronymi. 
who is a Hungarian refugee who moved to Switzerland uh, in 1950s. Um, yeah, he, he's somebody who I really look up to. He's now in his 80s, uh, but we stay in touch. Um, not as frequently as I would like, but yes, that person really played a very important role um, in shaping the person that I am today. Um, all right, so somebody is asking, ma'am, I tried two businesses and both failed. Do you think I'm not a good entrepreneur? Look, uh, you have to give me more information, okay? Why did you fail? What happened? Um, did you learn any lessons? So bottom line, one question that I do have for you is, did you learn any lessons? And if you learned lessons from the failed startups, then it's not... It doesn't mean that you're a bad entrepreneur just because you failed. Um, it could be a multitude of different things. Maybe you were at the wrong t at the wrong time in the wrong place. Maybe you were unable to find uh, and form the right founding team. Um, there could be multiple reasons. So don't give up. I think every you know entrepreneurial um, initiative that you take it teaches you a lot. As long as you're willing to take away those lessons from it, instead of thinking you're a failure. Okay. So yeah. And so yeah, so reach out, um, you know, maybe give me more details. I'm happy to talk through with you. All right, then there's a very, very good question. Somebody is asking me, what should we do when we want to start a business? So I'm going to give um, credit to Akash from the Nest IO, a good friend of mine who, you know, basically helped my team as well. Uh, what nearly three years back, he, he conducted a session for us. Um, so three elements whenever you want to solve a solve, uh, whenever you want to uh, start a business. One identify a problem that customers are faced with, right? So identify a real problem, right? That's really, really important. The problem identification and how many people actually experience that problem, that's really important. If you're sitting in your um, room, in your house, and you're going to say, oh, I think this is a problem, that may be a problem that you think is a problem, and that may not be something that a large number of people are faced with. So that's one. Um, so identify what is it that the customers are looking for, what is it that they need, what is the problem that they're trying to solve. So that's one. The second element is what is the skill set that you've got um, within you internally, within your team, um, and within your network. So are you going to be able to tackle that particular problem that you're identifying? And the third bit is are you passionate about it? So what are you passionate about is absolutely critical, right? Because um, Unlike a lot of people who think entrepreneurship is easy, and there are tons of people who make entrepreneurship look easy, so hats off to them, but entrepreneurship can also be very, very difficult, right? So the passion bit is very important because if you care about the problem um, and you care about that particular, you know, whatever you're trying to do, then you will stick with the business regardless of the difficult times, right? So look at it like a Venn diagram. You know what a Venn diagram is, the three circles. Look at where they are intersecting. The market need, the skill set that you've got, um, and your passion and where they overlap that's where your business needs to be right and the bigger the size of the overlapping piece the better it is okay um, another question was what are the three best qualities that I find in any founder okay so one ability to ask for help when you need it um, you know thinking that you know everything um, nobody knows everything right so that's one number two persistence and perseverance this is kind of like a repeat uh, to the to my previous point that you must um, have the capacity to persevere because things will get hard, um, you know, and you you need to be able to have that strength within you, within your team, within your network. That's why the community is really important. Um, what tribe do you belong to, right? Um, the third bit is uh, coachability and willingness to incorporate advice, right? That is really important. So um, being able to listen to different types of advice and people will give you all types of suggestions for your business, but being able to filter through to identify the information that is most useful, most critical for your business is critical. But having the willingness to listen to advice, right? Because, and especially when it's a small startup, it's like your baby, so you don't want to hear any criticism. So I would say, let's start listening to criticism, right? Open up your hearts and minds, it's okay. It doesn't mean if they, if they think your business is, uh, you know, really bad, it may not be as bad as they think it is, right? But if it is that bad, well, let's open ourselves to listening to the feedback to improve it, right? I think that's important. Okay, let's see if we've got other, what kind of strategies should be applied to sustain small businesses during this COVID-19? Okay, that's a very good question Nurul N is asking. Okay, so what can you do? Um, we've talked about a few things. A, we need to look at certain things that we can do. How can we retweak our businesses to start offering certain things which um, can earn you money even during this time? So, um, for instance, if you were offering trainings, face-to-face uh, -face trainings and you were charging for them, then let's try to do online trainings, virtual trainings, which can still earn you money. Okay. Um, 
we were already providing consulting to startups. Some of it was paid, some of it was pro bono. Again, this is something which we're doing. We're offering it now online. Uh, okay, we can't offer it face to face, but we can do it online, right? So, so that's something. How can you tweak your existing business in a way that it responds to um, you know new opportunities? So, for instance, today I was speaking to a startup. Um, they are already they are a uh, platform. Um, it, it's an e-commerce platform, right? But so far they were not providing grocery services and they were not providing health and sanitary uh, sanitation um, you know items. And now immediately, because that's one of the things which people are asking for again and again, hospital gowns, sanitizers, masks, um, you know, soap, et cetera, et cetera, short term you know, daily basis, uh, daily groceries. Those are things which are now required more and more by people that they were trying to serve. So they're expanding into that vertical, right? So take a look at what it is that people are looking for now and try to see if you can uh, tweak your business accordingly. The other thing that you need to do is, um, you know, cut off your fixed costs. So if you're paying rent, somewhere, um, anyway, the government has requested, um, you know, people to reduce rent, but this is important again, right? Um, that cut down on your fixed costs. So the people who were not performing very, very well, um, maybe it's time to let them go. It's very difficult, but you know, maybe you need to make that decision. The other thing is the people who can stick it out, who you want in your team, have honest conversations with them. Tell them, look, I can't pay you for the next three months or until this crisis settles down, right? They, if they're part of your team, they would know, have an honest conversation with them. You have not been paid. There are multiple issues that are happening, right? So pay, payments which were pending are going to be pending for God knows when, um, for how much time. Um, other projects which were in the pipeline, they may have gotten delayed. So there are serious concerns. So talk to your team members. If they want to stick it out with you, give them the, give them the opportunity. And you'd be surprised. A lot of people who are loyal to the company, um, they'll stick it out. Right. They also, there are people who will not want to leave your organization because they have no guarantee that they will be able to find other jobs. Right now, the market is going to be really pretty bad. So I think those are certain things that you can do. Mm, people have been giving unpaid leaves as well. Uh, people have been firing a lot of people as well. Uh, try to be as kind as possible if that is something you can do to retain staff without having to pay them. Maybe cut down on their timings. Right. Um, if they were full time, maybe part time. Those are certain things that you can do. OK. All right. So we have two minutes left. Um, let me just skim through. Uh, what else? Oh, somebody is asking me about investment. Yes, this was an important question. How can we secure investment during this difficult time? So let me let me make this uh, my last and final answer for this particular Ask Me Anything session. So it depends on the stage that you're at right so for early stage very very early stage or item well not early stage idea stage businesses it is anyway very difficult to find investors um, because it's just an idea right so for them uh, the opportunities always exist that you can uh, look for different challenges and op and competitions for people who have already um, proven their proof of concept who've already gone through that phase and the ones who are actually at a growth stage and they've got, uh, you know, they, they've proved their business model, they're trying to scale up, uh, investment is easier. So now there are certain things which are applicable, applicable regardless of COVID uh, crisis. You need to identify the investors who are interested in your stage, who are interested in your verticals, um, who are interested in your geography, right? So there are different, different investors who are not interested in investing in, um, let's say, Europe. Their focus is MENA region or then their focus may only be Pakistan, right? So let's try and identify those investors. Um, the other thing is that usually, so this is like research, um, let me see if I can dig up the article as well that I've been reading recently. Um, investors usually will continue investing even in the time of crisis because normally as well, uh, investors are risky, are, are risk takers, right? They're investing in your business, in your idea, in a team, etc. So um, normally, they continue investing in, in startups regardless of the crisis that's taking place. Um, and uh, they may reduce their ticket size. Okay, so that may happen, but generally it doesn't really affect the curve too much. Um, the other piece is, of course, if you are a startup that can easily tweak your, uh, you know, your business to look at addressing the COVID crisis, I think there is a lot of money to be had. So take a look at, uh, you know, my very good friend Nida, she's doing this with Standard Chartered Bank. Um, so right now they've introduced a new vertical for women in tech businesses who are tackling COVID crisis. So there's that. Then of course there is the, the hackathon that the NIC is putting together, um, a digital hackathon on health. 
So that's another area that you can look into um, to try and tackle uh, COVID crisis. Um, one thing which you do have to be clear on is that your, uh, your valuation uh, will go down in crisis situations. So, you know, again, just a quick research will show you how uh, valuations of different startups has already taken a, taken a downward um, curve. So ideally, uh, and obviously you will also find people who will want to invest more in you because now they can get a better deal for their money. Um, but, you know, if you, uh, perhaps it's better for you to look at venture debt and or grants, right? Um, so there's that. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the things. Okay. So <laughs> maybe you can say that I'm like doing, uh, you know, self-marketing. But one of the things that we did do as a response to COVID-19, we have introduced free office hours every Fridays um, from 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. So feel free to book your slot. Um, it's uh, bit.ly slash epiphany cares. Um, you can sign up for that. If you're looking actually for investment, then it's bit.ly slash uh, epiphany office hours. So, you know, if it's investment, it's a longer form that you have to fill out. But, you know, please feel free to do it. All right. Okay, so we've gone just one minute beyond 7.30. So I think I'm pretty, uh, uh, you know, thank you very much. Bradley has, has added a few things, right? Trim the fat, closely evaluate expenses, see which are critical, negotiate with landlords, other contracts, make employees feel like part of the team, even if they aren't in person. They will often work for a reduced amount of fee if they feel valued and if they think they will have a job to come back to. I think that's really, really important, right? And pivot. Absolutely. So pivoting is really important. Try to figure out what you can do. Again, uh, you know, sign up for office hours. We're happy to help you think through your digital strategy. Um, we're happy to help, um, you know, figure out your website, help you develop that uh, digital strategy, whatnot. Okay, so, so yeah. And branding as well. Branding in the times of crisis is absolutely critical. Okay, so I'm not saying spend your money on marketing budgets. I'm saying brand yourselves better, okay? And two great examples to look at. One is Baikia and one is um, Kareem. Take a look at both of them. Look at how they've been doing it in the local market. Take a look at Emirates. Um, you know, there are no airlines. There, there, are no air, there are no flights right now. But look at their video that came out recently. Okay. Absolutely. Another training, another opportunity that Bradley is mentioning, he's saying that, you know, companies overall in the US don't have much experience working remotely. We need training on best practices for companies who've seen their workforce move to remote uh, workers. Agreed. Another area that I can mention to you, look, a lot of people, they're not going to be able to, um, they will be looking, let's put it positively. So they will be looking for outsourcing possibilities in the developing world. So if you can do that, if you can uh, plug in, so you could be a matchmaker, or if you're in the business of finding, um, you know, or, or you've got your own software house already, et cetera, um, let's try and, uh, you know, feature our service, our services and provide those services because people will be letting more expensive resources go. And we know that, you know, as an emerging uh, economy, as part of the developing world, we can provide, um, uh, we can provide services at cheaper rates. Okay, all right, thank you very much for signing in. Okay, um, we do have other exciting sessions planned um, in the future. So, you know, sign up, follow us, uh, whatever, watch this space, all of that, whatever the marketing lingo is around that. So do that and thank you so much for listening to me and, um, you know, looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.